This is MathHeals.com, where you find more links to math and computer science YouTube videos. Let's talk about uh, installing and starting to use Oracle 11G Express Edition. Well, first thing you need to do is to make sure you have uh, the appropriate uh, requirements on your uh, computer, enough memory, hard drive, and so forth. You can do this by clicking your Start button here, uh, going to All Programs, which is right here, Clicking uh, Accessories. Your um, items will look a little bit different here than, than mine. And um, then we go down to System Tools. And then we go to System Information. And um, you can go through here and uh, compare, um, not necessarily what's in the, the book, but online you go look to see what, uh, what the requirements are. And uh, you can look up here to see if you have enough uh, whatever. Uh, in this case, like RAM. Uh, it sees it has installed physical uh, memory RAM, uh, 8 gigabyte. Um, let's see, hardware resources. You can go get more information on memory, detailed information, though you shouldn't need that. Uh, again, here's detailed information, I.O., Hardware resources components. You can uh, look here uh, if it's asking for something specific. That's interesting. I didn't know the, the audio codecs were here. Hmm. Um, software environment. Uh, you can look here. See what's running. Any kind of information am I giving you? Now, I, I have no clue, because um, I don't got it in front of me, um, specifically what they're looking for um, for your system. But this should tell you everything you need. Uh, probably this first page will actually tell you everything you need. Um, so it'll probably be like RAM and, and um, hard disk space and so forth. Um, the Oracle Database 11G Express Edition software. Do not install it off of the CD that came with the disk. Uh, with the book, you'll find that um, going out to the website and updating off the newest version is always, usually, your best bet. I shouldn't say always. Now, after you get it installed, uh, let's take a look at how to get some uh, some help uh, if you're having troubles. To access the documentation, and I put the uh, the steps here. You click Start, click All Programs, Oracle 11G, down here and you see there's a get help and then you can click read documentation and uh, this will come up here and gives you different documentation read me installation guide um, there's a free version uh, licensing information um, two-day DBA two-day developers guide This uh, gives you a lot of detailed information. Kind of little mini classes they put out here on it. So it's kind of neat. The um, registering for the support form. If I go to um, see start, all programs, it's all under Oracle 11G. Um, and it's pretty easy to find when you get here. Just click here, register for online form. So that's where you click there to uh, to register. And create a profile. I always tell everybody they should have uh, two email addresses. You should have your your regular email address, and then your um, kind of a secondary email address uh, that you use to sign up for everything. And that way, um, some of the places you sign up for will start sending you a lot of spam. Now Oracle won't, uh, but a lot of other places will. And if you have that generic email that um, is kind of my sign sign up and under any account, then that'll pretty well handle it. Uh, now accessing the support form. Again, I'm going to click my start, go to all programs, go to Oracle Database 11G, get help, and um, go to online form. And um, you can click sign in there, and hopefully I can remember my sign in.
Ooh, sure if I, there it goes. Okay, now I'm signed in. What's the benefit of signing in? Well, you know, you, anybody can go here and read these. But um, if you want to submit uh, submit a item out here, there's no there's no support for this free version, unfortunately. Um, you know, some benefits actually uh, paying for the product. Um, so people come out here if they're having trouble, and they'll post uh, um, whatever whatever issue they're having. Like here, um, this person's having trouble installing and starting Oracle um, 11G XE. Let's see what the problem is. So time ago I had another problem installed and then installed with Haptoot and there's a message. It's already configured. And uh gives detailed information. Um uh, legalities when using Oracle XE. Find a host of web application for which I've used Oracle XE as a back end. Uh can I certainly be used okay. So you can see there's different support you can get. I'm assuming there's a, a search here somewhere. I'm probably looking right at probably this uh, link says search. So I come here and I can uh, type in whatever. Um, oh, SQL enter. And this will bring up everything in terms of SQL. And you can limit it down. It comes up here with your, your uh, categories. Here's ISQL plus. Um, SQL Developer, Data Modeler, so forth, ODBC. Uh, so anyway, that's your that's your uh, help. Now let's talk a little bit about um, the Oracle Server uh, startup. And these are basic Oracle X XE skills. Uh, XE's Express Edition. Um, Oracle Server startup. Uh, you start a database instance will mount, uh, associate the physical database to the instance, and open the database. Um, for the most part, these are done for you. Uh, so you don't have to do each one of these uh, as a single step. Now we're going to see the startup on the local machine here and shutdown. Uh, the startup and, sh uh, and shutdown on a Oracle server, where, which may have 500 users, is kind of the same concept, uh, where you're doing something to get everything going. Now the startup and the shutdown on a large server is quite intense. Uh, the Unix uh, script we had, uh, I think it was, I think it was Linux based, um, where I worked was pretty long. <laughs> but I didn't know what most of that did. We didn't have to. It was supplied by Oracle, and they said you just need to run this when you start up your server. You need to run this when you shut down your server. So it wasn't much more difficult than what, it, what we're going to look at. Now our shutdown. We're going to close the database, dismount the database from the instance, and then shut down the instance. Now, if, if for some reason your server um, abnormally terminates, uh, that's a server crash, if you've never heard that term before. Okay, now let's uh, take a look at uh, checking the status of the Oracle XE, starting it manually, stopping it, uh, and then um, setting it for automatic Oracle. Uh, automatic Oracle startup. Uh, we're going to click Start. And we're going to go to Control Panel. If you've never been to Control Panel, that's kind of where all the important parts of your uh, computer are. We're going to go to System and Security. And uh, Administrative Tools right here. This is a little bit different than what's in the textbook. And I don't know how to make this bigger, so hopefully you can see it. But at least you hear me talk, talk about it. And you see the services here. I'll double-click it. And I got all this um, somewhere. I got all that right there. Okay. Well, these are all the things that are running on uh, your computer, service-wise. I shouldn't say all of them that are running. Some of them are currently running. But you can see the, the ones that um, are started. Um, I'm looking for Oracle XE. There it is. Oracle Service XE. And you see it's, um, it says the status is started. Uh, startup type is automatic. It's a uh, login as a local system. If I want to stop the service, you see over here it says stop. So I click that. And um, take a little bit here. 
Okay, so the service has stopped then. Well, if I want to start it, I can come over here and click Start. Windows makes that pretty pretty simple. Now, if you got a, uh, Windows 8, I it probably is a little bit different, but it's still the same concept. And take a little bit to get back up and running here. Okay. Now you see there's a restart to service. You can also right-click on it and see there's a stop and restart. Up here, you see this uh, uh, black square, that's stop service, and then this would be start service and pause and restart service. Uh, if I right-click on it, I can choose properties and um, let's see oh here it is <laughs> looking right at it. startup type see how it says automatic well if you don't want it to start automatically you can do it manually uh, this may be especially true if you have a system resources problem Maybe you don't want to start your Oracle server until you get ready to um, do the items for this class or you want to use it. Um, sometimes you'll get so many of these items loaded that your system goes so slow. I've noticed since I've installed this Oracle uh, Express Edition, uh, my computer's a lot slower booting up. Um, I'll, bur I'll go into IE and what used to come up real fast, I have to sit there and wait probably uh, four or five minutes for it. Um, so once it's up and running, it's okay. So, again, that's an, uh, an idea. If you want to change the startup type, this is where you want to want to come. And then you just click OK. I won't make any changes. And uh, that's how to um, check status of your Oracle XE. If you're having trouble and it doesn't appear like it's, it's working, go look to see if it's running. Um, and that's how you can start it, stop it, and then how you can set it for automatic or manual startup at, when your computer comes up. Let's talk about SQL Plus. There's different ways of um, getting to that. Let me close these services, by the way. There we go. <coughs> if I come to click my start, click all programs, choose Oracle Database 11G Express Edition, and you see there's a run SQL command line. This is the easiest way to get into this, uh, this tool. This is an ad hoc tool allow you to query databases, to update them, uh, so forth. We'll, we'll use this uh, quite a bit in this class. Now after you get in here, if you type connect, space, and this is your username. And uh, by default, if you go through the standard install, you'll, um, you'll set up a system user. And hopefully you remembered the password you used to do that. Otherwise, you probably want to uninstall and reinstall so you can remember the password. Because it'll come up and ask for that. If I press enter here, it asks me for my password. Hopefully I remember it. And I did. And it says connected. Well, right now it's not very exciting. Mainly here we're just checking to make sure the installation went okay and kind of give a little bit of an introduction. If I type help, index, it'll come up. And these are all the different things I can do inside this. Um, well, not all of them, but um, this is a lot of what what I can do. And to get a specific... Uh, help you can type help let's say I want to look what exit does commits or rolls back all pending changes logs out of Oracle uh, terminates um, our utility and uh, goes back to the operating system uh, commits what does that mean um, I've been making some changes to the database uh, updating uh, updating tables well um, this will commit them commit them just uh, saves them that's another word for saves. Rolls back. Um, if you uh, had something happen where you need to roll back to the last uh, good save point, like let's say you screw up your uh, Microsoft Word document, for example, and you can either save it or you can close it. And closing it just then say it's back to where it was. That's kind of that's kind of the idea of it. Um, we're not going to do anything with this right now. Just go ahead and type exit to exit out. And let me see if I remember how to do it this other way. If you click your start and then this little menu here, if you type CMD, that stands for command command prompt. And I think if you type in SQL plus here, yes, SQL plus, it'll come up and ask you if your system name, this or your username, and you can put in system, and then type in your password like that. 
Is there any benefit to doing it this way via the other way? No. It's probably easier to do the other way, but you do have to do the connect uh, if you if you do it with the off the menu here. And I, I put this here. Uh, connect to username. Okay, now let's talk about our database homepage. And if I click the start and click all programs and uh, Oracle 11G and where's it at? Get started. See if I click the get started here. <coughs> it's uh, thinking. There it goes. Well, spoke too soon. Come up here in just a second. There we go. This tells us our, of course, our um, version up here. Uh, we can look at storage. Click the storage here. It'll ask you for um, login as a database user. Um, and you'll get very used to entering in that system and then whatever you set your password as. And uh, you see the table spaces here, your free space, um, use space. Um, I was never very good at this this part. Uh, the the woman I work with, she uh, she mainly handled managing uh, the storage, and um, she did a pretty good job on it. Uh, this takes somebody, the uh, database administrator, to go through and check to see if it's getting filled up. Because if it's getting filled up, you need to possibly do something about it. Sometimes you ha you can have it configured such that it uh, will automatically give more more disk space, but I think there's even a limit to that. You can see your sessions uh, that are running, and then the application express over here. Um, we'll be doing more with this. This now this looks different than what's in the the textbook. This is for the new edition, and um, so I would recommend definitely watching these these videos um, because you'll 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 get a better picture of what what you're going to be seeing. And again, I wouldn't install the old version. Um, try to go with the newest version. It's just um, everything's improved, uh, errors are eliminated, and, and um, well, I shouldn't say everything's improved. Sometimes they just come out with new versions, and <laughs> there's really no need for it. But you'll definitely see um, new features and so forth that, uh, that are uh, very handy. Anyway, that's um, the end of that unit of uh, installing and starting use of the Oracle 11G Express Edition. If you've gone through all these and you've come up with this page, you've signed in, you've brought up SQL Plus, you're up and running. Uh, everything appears to be, be going good.